Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to this class. So we will continue. Uh, today we will continue for the introduction and then also move on to the uh, second part. The continue for the material. So we start to focus some bit on the our uh, uh, crystal structure for the semiconductor uh, materials. Okay, so this is where we start last week. The last time we have already mentioned that considering the development for the microelectronics in a different age, actually we come up with a different device concept. In the early beginning, we consider for the vacuum tubes. And later on, we have a bipolar, which means that we consider the device that need both transport, considering the electron and holes. And also the later on we have what we call the MOSFET, which is the MOSFET is typically identified as what we call unipolar device. That means that in the channel there's only the one carrier during the transport. So in most of the case, uh, the, the MOSFET needs, uh, for example, in the N-channel MOSFET, we need to have the electrons as a major carriers. And then also we have another type called the P-MOSFET, which we typically need uh, the the hole as a, a carrier, major carrier transport in the channel here. So this is where we have been discussed last time that uh, in the typical case of the metal oxide semiconductor uh, field effect transistor, we have a p-type substrate and we have a source, we have a gem, and also we have the dielectric here. And then on top of the dielectric, we have the gate electrode here. So this is three terminal device, which means we can bias in the three different places. We can bias in the source, we can bias in the drain, we can bias in the gate. The bias means that we give the voltage layer. In most of the case, we will ground it, the source. So the source will put as a ground, as we don't give any bias, we try to put that as a zero voltage here. So in this case, we only apply the voltage in the gate side and also the drain side here. And since this is a dielectric, dielectric means that this is a perfect insulator, which means when we apply the gate voltage, uh, the typical physics tell us that if you apply the voltage, for sure you will have some electron will be attracted below your dielectric. And because this is insulator, so ideally, all these electrons will be stay in here because of the perfect insulator. So insulator, the purpose is to try to block the electron here. So therefore, you will form the electrons below the dielectric. And furthermore, we apply the small drain bias here. So therefore, this is, for example, positive one volt here. And all these electrons will be start to attract from the source to the drain side in the end become the drain current as shown me here. So therefore, therefore, if we consider the typical characteristic like the, the ID and then the VG uh, characteristic, you can see that uh, once we start to apply the gate voltage enough higher because of once across to this, uh, voltage and then we start to have the electron formation in the channel so you can see that the current is start to increase so that's actually the most critical part for about the MOSFET here so we will for sure to talk about this in detail later but you can see that uh, in this case the major transport carrier is electron so that's why we call this as a unipolar device and on the other hand, we have a bipolar. That means that the carrier transport need to consider both the electron and hole together. Okay, so for sure that uh, as we are continue to uh, scaling, we continue to make our device as a higher performance as possible. 
we not only need the very conventional structure, but also has some certain innovation in terms of the materials or also the uh, uh, device architecture. So the first one, the usually in the case of the semiconductor, we are actually quite care about the mobility. So the mobility is a certain correlation with our drain current here. So we try to implement some of the new material, try to improve the mobility, mobility improvement here. So the purpose is trying to increase our on-state current. So in that case, we have a several different uh, materials innovation. For example, we consider the strand silicon, we consider the germanium channel, and also the three five materials here. These are the mainly related to trying to replace the channel material. So in the case of this cross section for the advanced transistor, we can see that this is a source, this is drain, and this is gate. And where is the channel? So the channel is here. This is a channel. So the channel is a small area between the source and drain and below the gate here. So we try to replace the channel with a certain new material here. And what does mean the strand silicon is uh, that we try to use a strand silicon in the source and drain side, trying to improve mobility. And for sure that uh, this is an uh, introduction class, so we won't talk too much detail about the each one. So each one, it has been developed for more than 10 years. So far, it's still ongoing. It's difficult to say in a very brief way that how the strain silicon or the channel material can improve the, the on current, but it's generally like that we try to implement some new materials here. So as we have already mentioned that uh, the typical characteristic for the MOSFET, so we have the drain versus our gate voltage here. So as we already mentioned, typically when we try to apply the gate bias here, and after a certain moment, you start to see the drain current increase. So this is a very uh, standard classic IDVG characteristic. Mm -hmm. And typically we define this voltage is what we call the threshold voltage. So the threshold voltage, it means that this is a voltage once we apply bias larger than this voltage, we start to see some current generate here. So usually we define this as a, a threshold voltage here. And what does mean the I arm here? The I arm means that if we replace the channel material here, it should be able to give us a characteristic like here. And this is improved I arm. This is improvement of the, the on, uh, on state current here. So that's the purpose. So in general, the the concept to further improve the transistor is mainly either to increase on resistance, uh, on current, or trying to reduce the uh, uh, leak current. So we will talk about this later. And one more thing I want to be mentioned that this is the linear scale of the ID versus the VG here. And actually, in the next one, that uh, so this is uh, I on where we have been already mentioned here, and then for sure the the I on is not enough. We for sure have more innovation in the different way. The later on for the the state of our device is mainly considering not for the I on but also for the I on over I off. So not only for the on-state current, but off-state current. And therefore, 
I need to explain a little bit time, explain that uh, how do we see the off state current here. So let's back to this slide. So as I say, this is a linear drain current versus a linear gate voltage. But as a engineering analysis, we often trying to replace this one as a log scale. So this is log drain current versus the linear gate voltage here. So if we try to plug as a log drain current, then you will see the characteristic now become in this way. And we are trying to define it's already here. It's somewhere we are interested in for the IR here. So the purpose for the, the new device is always trying to improve the IR here. And another uh, need to be considered is I of, which is of state current here. That's uh, actually the, the 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 idle current that if you don't use your electronics, and then in that case there will be many related to the the I of here, and therefore the purpose for the further improvement is not only considered for the I of, but also trying to improve. I on or I off. So this is how we call the, the on off ratio here. So on off ratio because of we try to make this on off ratio as larger as possible. As, a pos as larger as possible. Yes? Do we need to consider the No. As large as possible. This is not related to the survey. So the idea case is trying to have on off ratio as large as possible. But why do we need to so care about the off current? This is because if you still back to see the typical MOSFET transistor. So as we have been drawing, this is a p-type of substrate, and we have the n plus n plus in the source stream here. So this is our source, and this is our drain side, and we have the insulator, and on top of the insulator we have the gate. And as we already explained, the, 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 the typical operation for most phase, we apply the gate bias here, and then we apply the drain bias one volt here. Since we apply the gate bias, you start to have the electrons formation under the gate here. And since we apply the drain bias here, and all these electrons will start to move from the source to the drain side, and that's leading to our uh, uh, drain current. But the problem is that uh, this is typical, the place we define as a channel length. That's how we call the channel length, LCH, here. But uh, as you may know, that uh, the one of the, the technology trend is trying to scale in, trying to uh, make everything as smaller as possible. So ideally, we also trying to make the channel length as small as possible. But the channel length becomes smaller, which means you bring this and this very close. And once you bring this and this close, we will easily see that our off-state current start to increase. Uh, this is because of due to the certain of the quantum mechanics where we will explain later. That's mainly related to the, the tunneling effect. That's mainly related to the tunneling effect here. And therefore, uh, so that's a become the challenge.
So that's the big kind of challenge is that if we make our device below the 10 nanometer, because our off state current will become the extremely high. So the I of So the I of is increased if our channel length is reduced. And therefore, for the advanced device, we not only care about the I on, but also need to consider the I of as well. And that's why we'll move on to the next generation is considering what we call the electrostatic improvement. The electrostatic is actually is also considering the tunneling effect. It's majorly considered like the potential distribution under the channel, and then in general, we call this electrostatic. So we need to have a better control the electrostatic below the gate, and therefore, we are need to have a certain of the new device geometry here. So as you see here, these are the most three most popular ones that uh, even right now that we are still working on this technology, we are trying to improve the technology. The first one, which is the SOI. So the SOI, the full name is the silicon on insulator. So we make the, 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 the channel on top of the insulator material here. So you can see this is a SOI. So the general idea is uh, just replay this part. Replay all this one become the SOI. Because of the of steady current is mainly come from our substrate here. So then therefore the we can if we try to replace the substrate as, a, as an insulator and ideally we should be able to improve our of steady current. Another one is a trigate here. Trigate, which is mainly related to the, what we call the, the fin fat structure. And then the fin fat structure is first to propose by the Professor Chen Ming Hu from the UC Berkeley. And also, beyond the fin fat, we have what we call the surround gate here. So usually surround gate can be actually in a different way, either by the nano wire or the gate all around. These are uh, all the some uh, similar names, but it's mainly related to we try to put the channel completely covered by our gate dielectric here. So that's how we call the surrounding gate here. So it could be, for example, this is what we call the nano wire. Nano wire uh, device here. So these are still the all the very uh, popular technology that we use still uh, even is already on the production, but there are still many aspects need to be improved. So once we consider the film fact, it's also necessary to mention that the the, the father of the film fact is Professor Chen Ming Hu from UC Berkeley. So as you already in that in the field for why you might already hear the, his name. And he is a very uh, tight collaboration with uh, NYCU and also with ICST. He's even the, the, the professor in the ICST as well. So some of you already, uh, he is actually leading some of the, some research center in the in the NYCU, so some of you might maybe in the future already or, or already involved in the research with him. So he is in uh, in the collaboration with us with a, a regular meeting. Actually, to be honest, I also will have a meeting with him this afternoon. But uh, his major innovation is related to, in his proposed uh, thin phase structure. So you can see this is a typical MOSFET. Planner, that's how we call the planner MOSFET. So MOSFET, this is a, uh, and then as we already explained, once we apply the gate bias, we apply the drain bias here. So we already start to see, this is all other electrons here. We start to move 
from source to the drain side here. So that's a typical MOSFET structure. However, as we say, there's a huge possibility that the leak current can be go through from the this region. And therefore, in order to have the better control of this of state leak current, therefore the professor who proposed this car we call the fin fed type of the transistor. So the fin fed is now even in the 5 nanometer or the 3 nanometer still will be the major fashion for the advanced technology. Although you have seen the literature or the news say that we are considering the, the nano sheet, nano ribbon, or even nano wire, but uh, that's still quite difficult to have the major production. And therefore, in this case, the FinFed will still the major technology dominant so far. So in the case, you can see the gate is completely covered in the channel in the three-dimensional way here. So not only the top, so the top is will be only very similar to the typical MOSFET because uh, this is a top. But also in the fin fat type, it also have the channel covered by, by the sidewall here. So you can you have the sidewall channel here. Also you have a sidewall channel on the other hand here. So therefore your electrons can be formed as a top service but also the sidewall service sidewall service as well and therefore you will have the 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 higher on current but also in the off state which means that we try to reduce our leak current in the off state all the electron cannot be go through from the top or the sidewall and therefore we get a better on off uh, ratio for the this kind of a transistor here. So because of uh, the in, the invention of the FinFET type, so Professor Hu is also awarded by the some kind of the national owner with uh, 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 the president uh, Barack Obama before in the 2000, I think it's 2016 or 17. And this is the first paper that he uh, uh, report for the FinFET transistor here. So this is the first time that the demonstration of the FinFET in the 1999. And that is already right now, it's more than almost like 20 years. But you can see that uh, after 20 years, the huge the invention has a great impact on all of the society. Even after 20 years, this still will be the major fashion for the technology and it will last at least I think for the the future 10 years we will still consider for the FinFET. Also the FinFET title of this device is not only impact on the silicon based device but also already impact on the compound device. So if you are working in a certain other domain you will see the very similar device structure but in the different material here. So this is the first time that uh, how they draw the FinFET type as we say that you have a drain, you have a source, but now you have the gate is uh, uh, cover our channel in the three dimensional way. So you have the top channel, but you have also the sidewall channel from the two sidewall here. And you can see that the first demonstration here, they show that uh, this is a uh, uh, one more thing, this is in the case of the P-MOSFET. That's how we call the P-channel fat here. So it's a slightly different compared to our previous one. So previous one, we mainly show our N-MOSFET. Also later on, we will explain this. But right now, we don't talk too much. So in the typical IDVG, as we have already shown before, that's regularly look like here and this is how we usually call the N MOSFET but in order to have the digital circuit operation here we actually need to consider as what we call the CMOS which combination of the PMOS and N MOSFET so therefore there's uh, another one which showing the completely different opposite characteristic like here and then in that case this is how we call as a P-MOSFET
So the earthmost phase, as we already explained, the earthmost phase, the major transport carrier is electrons. Right? So we apply the party gate bias and then we induce electron and then the electron flow from source to drain becomes the drain current. And also, similar, in the case of the P MOSFET, then this the major carrier transport, which will be the hole. So which means that if we want to induce a hole, we need to apply the negative bias, right? Because of the basic physics tells us that the if you have the negative bias, you attract some positive charge, which will be the hole here. So we will explain this later. So in general, there is a two type of transistor. One is called the NMOS, which is major as a, a electron conduction. Another one is a hole, which is con uh, need to have the, uh, sorry, another one is PMOS, which need to have the hole as a major conduction here. So you can see this is demonstrated as a early. And one more, the most uh, uh, critical uh, parameter for this uh, uh, transistor, you can see, first one, it only uses uh, 2.7 nanometer as an oxide signal, which is extremely small here. It's almost close to the limitation. Another one is this uh, parameter. That's uh, super crucial for us. It's called a substantial swing or sometimes we call the substantial hole slope. So sometimes we call it as, as a SS. So in general, the SS is a parameter to measure the slope here. So the slope between the on -off is a place where we consider as a substantial hole sweep SS here or this one is the same. And this is a, uh, only the 69 substantial hole sweep here. That's actually the extremely uh, small here and then become the the one of the major advantage of for the FinFET type here. But we will talk about the, the later why everyone is so care about the substrate swing here. Because well, now it's become the, the major uh, bottleneck for the advanced transistor because it's very difficult to continue to make the SS as small as possible because there's uh, some physics limitation but the, the engineers are very genius, so they still try to propose some possibility to break the fundamental uh, limitation. Okay, so here we have, so we have the thin fat, but of, of course, you are here, you are the most of you uh, research in all of your graduate research work, actually it's not related to the thin fat. Because the film is already in the, the production level here. So in the university, we always do something ahead of the production, which means it can be the five years or even the 10 years early study, then the, the, in the production uh, consideration. So most of us will not only study the film fact, we are actually interested in the something else beyond the film fact. So you can see that uh, as considering the different kind of the option, there are so many of the technology beyond the FinFET option here. And none of this has been identified as a major trend, or, but also none of this has been identified as must be the something that we won't use anymore. So everything on this plot are so promising. So therefore, in terms of the research uh, landscape, that uh, there are still many interesting things that we can study because all these are the very great topics that can be either for the master or PhD or even for the whole life of study. Because some of the technology shown me here, it has been studied for more than decades here. It still proves in showing some of the improvement and still need some of the 
the black soup here. So let's quickly go through some of the interesting. So the first one is a very conventional SIMO scaling. So scaling is the one that we have already talked about that we try to make the channel as smaller as possible. And therefore, the scaling will have a certain issue about, for example, electrostatic. That's where we already mentioned, which is a on-off ratio issue. So when we try to make the device as small as possible, we see that the off current will increase, and then we get the walls of on-off ratio here. And also, we need to minimize the parasitics. So the parasitic, considering the parasitic capacitance and parasitic resistance here, these all are will actually hinder our device performance here. And here is uh, some option here. Some of them you already see. For example, this is SOI. That's where we already discussed here. And this is nano Y. That's we also shown before. However, there's a several different types of the, the nano Y. For example, this is what we call the GAA. GAA is uh, the get all around. Get all around. So actually, it's also very mm -hmm. similar to the nano Y. You just have the gate directly cover all around of your channel. So sometimes we also call this as a get all around. But this one is called a horizontal, and this one is called a vertical. So we try to make the transistor with the channel horizontal, just like a planar fat. Or even we can make our channel with a vertical type, and that's how we call the vertical gate all around. And these are the some terms that uh, uh, you probably will hear about this in the future. And also, these are already very popular for a while. This is CNT, and that's usually we consider as a carbon nanotube. So the carbon nanotube has been uh, uh, put on the table for also for the decades here. And there's uh, some very attractive characteristic. But uh, when we consider into the production level, there's still many things need to be worked on the CNT level here. So this is a conventional CMOS scaling technology. And also, right now, we consider the new charge base. So we are considering new switching mechanism here. So we have uh, proposed some of the technology that actually based on the, the new switching mechanism here. For example, the one also very popular before is called the T-FAT, which is a tunneling fat. So the tunneling fat is actually considering that uh, we try to make it our source strain. As I already said before, that once the source strain is getting close to close, and then we have the tunneling effect here. So electron is easy to transport from the source to drain side here. And also some of the people start to try to think using this as a transport mechanism and then try to make this one as a new kind of the device. And of course, in here, we won't talk about the T-FAT here. So that's also very complicated, just for your introduction here. And also, this one is one of the hard research in the last several years, what we call the negative capacitance FAT here. So negative capacitor fat is measured enabled by considering the ferroelectric. Material. So we need to consider the ferroelectric material that has actually enabled us for the, the negative capacitor effect here. So also 
like this for the 2D transistor. So we consider the 2D semiconductor material. That's also the one of the very popular approach here. So these are the old new switching mechanism here. So already people have been studied for a while, but uh, there's still some problem. For example, how do we overcome the production? So if we consider production, it's not only make the device on the small coupon. So in university, we often to make the device on the small coupons, or even we consider like the 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 we make the on the device on the four inch wafer, but then maybe only ten percent of our device will be survived. But in the production, we need to make the one hundred percent of those device can be survived here. So that's a challenge, and also another one is that how does the circuit level try to use this device? Because these are the new switching mechanism and then the circuit design needs a completely new architecture and new design concept. And that's why the, the, this also becomes a bottleneck because the typical, in the past, the most fair, the circuit people only consider is the arm off. But right now in that case, the, we not only have the arm off, but there are so many parasites. Yes? What do you mean the convention? Conventional it means that uh, all of these are based on the typical silicon. Yes, and if this is not the typical uh, MOSFET operation, we all consider that uh, novel. So the conventional is silicon and the novel is other No, not exactly, but uh, also the novel can be the some materials novel on top of the silicon. That's also the novel. The transistor we use what? In the electronic lab. Electronic lab. You mean the where in the lab? Yeah. Where, where, which lab? What kind of lab label? For example, the MOSFET That depends on the how, how, uh, what kind of label for that uh, application. I'm not sure the what's the, the kind of application for your case. The application needs sometimes a very standard MOSFET, but also it can have very advanced device. So, um, the space, uh, device more expensive than the one. Yes, That's something you buy it, but what we are saying here is something you will not be able to buy it. Oh, there are um, commercial secrets. No, this is not commercial because people cannot commercial this. Oh, so it's just a thesis? Not no, 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 it's not thesis. This is still the under the development. Oh, under development. It's not that like there's no company right now they can say guarantee for the successful commercial life of this one. When we consider the commercial lines, it's not like we make 100 devices and 10 will be success and that's what we consider commercial lines. <coughs> commercial lines means that if we make the 100 devices, we need to guarantee less than 90% will be still alive. But none of these can be still alive for more than 90%. This is how we usually call this as a yield. So yield for this device is still very uh, low. That's new, the need uh, everyone's efforts to continue to improve. And most graduate schools are uh, studying the novel component. Most private school? Mm -hmm. uh, graduate schools. Mo that depends. That's, uh, that's really depends on your, the, 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 your advisor and how they sing. Because everyone in, in this room, everyone has a different this is a device and they have different expertise. But I believe that uh, all the advisors here in this room, that uh, whether you belong to, they are all working on the novelty. Because of, uh, if there's a novel, there's no value that uh, requires everyone to do this. Okay? Mm, I think the question here 
is a little bit uh, uh, not accurate because of the novelty here can be happen in everywhere. Even in the manufacturing company like TSNC, they have uh, many novelty here, but uh, just the novelty here is not enough to in the production. For example, the transistors in the newest iPhone are not novel components? No, it's a novel. It's also novel to world already in the production. Yes, we can say that. Oh, okay. 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 So the the third part, which will be the something that the beyond the charge switching. So previously, we still many consider the charge type. So when we consider charge type, it means that the, certainly we consider like a carrier. We consider electron and electron and hole here. These are the charge based switching. But uh, there's uh, something new that uh, actually we don't need to have the charge uh, during the device operation here. And this will completely change the CMOS logic, which is complete, even change for the circuit level design here. For example, here is a some example like a quantum computing here. So quantum computing is uh, like the bus wall in the past years. Everyone is talking about the quantum computing. Here, they say the quantum computing can move our device in the next level and bring our society in the next uh, the, the environment that can be benefit from the quantum device here. But there's uh, some operation condition for the quantum computing here. For example, the quantum device needs to be operate in the extremely low temperature. Usually it's below the 10K. Here, that's uh, actually the, as we know that the 77K is already, this already equal to minus 200 Celsius degree, uh, degree here. But if we want to operate the device with uh, below the 10K here, this is condition below the minus 250 here. Even for the sun core part, but that's the below 10k is what we call the uh, uh, peripheral device. So it's uh, the device that the neighboring of the quantum, de quantum device here. That's how we call the below 10k. But in the really core part of the quantum device, it typically need to be operate below like the 4k here. So that's emo equal to minus 266 Celsius degree here. So that's an extremely tough condition that if we want to operate our device in this domain here. But that's still the main research topic here. Even right now, people start to trying to make this transistor under this operation. It's how we call it, called CMOS. So we try to put uh, our device in the such cold condition and thus can be have the superior operation. Yes? Is that called a uh, Yes, under this condition that we have a superconductivity characteristic. Yes, yeah. But that's only, the superconductivity is only matter with uh, the metal side because metal below the certain uh, temperature we have the superconductivity in the certain material here. Not exactly zero, but it's extremely low. I will not say zero. Because in, in the ideal case, there's no zero resistivity, this material. And does the quantum relate to the quantum mechanics? Uh, no, it's not a related to quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is mainly considered a carrier transport. We will also talk about this later. Okay. Okay, so we also have this kind of the spin logic, which we need to have considered the magnetic material, and then the SS, STT logic here. So these are all the different uh, transistor type that can be very promising for the future. Okay, so 
One more thing I want to discuss is uh, how do we actually make the device with a low power consumption here. So as you see that uh, uh, if you look at for the advanced technology on the news, it's always say that we want to make the device a low power. The purpose of low power is become our electronic device are more safe than energy. So your device can last longer because it can show the less power here. So your battery can be survived for longer here. But in terms of a device characteristic, how do we make the transistor with a low power? What's actually the typical request here? So here is an example for the MOSFET. And then we already show that in the typical MOSFET, we, the characteristic we care the most is a drain current versus a gate. It's an IDVG here. And also if we try to plug in in the log scale, and that's already something we already showed before, the characteristic should be look like somehow like in this way. So this is typical log ID versus the VG characteristic here. And if we try to make the, the typical device operation, we will define the, what we call the VDD, which is the operating voltage. So this is our operating voltage. And if we want, want to try to make our device as a low power, that means we need to lower our operating voltage. In the case right now, most of the case, we, we have 1.5 volt here. But if we want to make it for the one volt here, so that means that if, uh, we need to have the transistor characteristic like here. With the same on current. But we need to have the higher, higher, the uh, 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 lower slope here, the steeper slope here. In this case, we can have the same output current, but with only bias at the one volt here. So that can have the low power consumption. Because we reduce our operating voltage here. So that's a typical request if you want to make the device towards the low power here. So the general idea is trying to reduce the operating voltage here. But in order to achieve this one, we need to make this one as a steeper slope here. So as we have already said before, one thing we care most is the substitution slope. And then if we want to make the transistor with a low power, actually you need to make the slope even steeper. So you need to have a steep. The steep slope, which means you have a lower SS here. So therefore, in the case here, in the typical transistor, we have a substitution slope around like 90 millivolt per decade here. And in the advanced device, we always hope to have the SS smaller than seven millivolt per decade. But it's very difficult to make it below the 70 because there's a some certain of the uh, fundamental limitation here. But at least this is a goal trying to reduce the substantial swing, substantial slope. Actually, in the end, we can make our device towards a low power operation. So that's from the device point of view that the how do we actually make the device as a, a power uh, energy safe as we have? Okay, so what we discuss here is uh, always we have to put in the, the typical like the map 
will be considered for the the different kind of the most low technology. And then in previous what we mainly discussed part, which will be this part. This is uh, the more and more scaling. And in the more and more scaling, we are mainly trying to make the transistor as a smaller as a possible. Right now, we are in the age of 5 nanometer. Even we are actually start to consider for the 3 nanometer soon here. So it's basically in the roadmap of the more and more here. But actually, there's another part, which is here. That's we consider as a more than more technology. So the more and more technology is uh, some technology interacting with the people and environment. That's for example, if we have the art technology, that's actually related to the one we are using very often now is the 5G or 6G for the communication here. So we need to have the art technology. And also you can see that there's a high V and power here. This is also related to the, for example, the recently, the very, the also the popular technology is about the adapter. We can have the phase charging adapter. Even in the case of the electrical vehicle, the electrical vehicle is something that, uh, like the Tesla, is a, the very famous electrical vehicle company here. So in the electrical vehicle here, we need to have the all kinds of components that can take care of the energy convert, uh, convert here. So in that case, we need to convention the energy from the high power to the low power here. And therefore, we need to have this, like the high V and power device technology. So here is uh, some example that the house are the actually the more than more technology is important for us uh, uh, life as well. So this is a server, the architecture in the server. So have you ever wondering that how actually the electrical energy in the end delivered to our home or delivered to our electronic product? Actually, that's required several stage of the electrical energy uh, transform here. So you can see this is typical the 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 high voltage DC transmission line here the Gaoya Dianta. So you can see that uh, this taking care of the electrical energy from our electrical planet here. So in that case, you have very very high voltage AC. So in here they are carrying on with uh, more than thirteen k kV, and then this is AC voltage here. But in our digital chip here, actually we only need to have a one volt, right? This is how we say that we want to make our chip as a low power consumption, which means our operating voltage is only need a one volt, and then all or even like one point five volt here. But it's also it's only need for the DC voltage here. So how can we transform the high voltage AC? the low voltage DC here. So we need to have the several stage of the energy conversion here. For example, first one, we need to have the transformer, we have the power supply, and we start to convert the energy from the AC to DC. And now we have the 400 volt DC voltage. And also we need to another stage 400 volt to 48 volt here. So that's also related to the DC to DC. And also we have 48 volt to 12 volt and 12 volt to one volt here. So each one, because not, it's not possible, we have the device can directly transform such high voltage AC to the one voltage DC. So we need to have a several different stage here. And you can see that the, this old stage showing that the efficiency is not perfect. So you have a 98%, you have 97%, you have 98, you have 95. And last stage, you have only 85%. And this all in the end becomes the energy loss 
So we waste all the energy. So in, if we got a 100% here, in the end here is only maybe less than 80% delivered to our electronic product. So therefore, we need to certain of the innovation in this energy converter here. Here, that's how we usually call these domains considered as a power electronics. So the power electronics is electronics that's taking care of the power delivery or the power converter here. So one of the 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 the, the uh, popular example for the power electronics is the adapter. Adapter is a chong dian qi. So I think that uh, all you, everyone, whoever have any product, they always need to have adapter. Adapter for your cell phone, adapter for your laptop, adapter for your switch, adapter for your uh, TV, whatever. So this adapter is only is actually taking care of the energy converter here. So you can see that these are the technologies that we don't follow the more law, but they are still highly correlated with our life here. So this is an example that we can consider this one. Conventional, we need to two stage of a converter, 48 to 12, 12 to 1 volt here. But now we have some new material. The new, new material bring us a new uh, performance here. So we only need to have a one architecture, that's a 48 volt to 1 volt here. So we can only use a one kind of converter to taking care of the 48 volt to 1 volt. This kind of the, the, the energy conversion here. So that's actually the one example related to how the, the more than more technology here. Uh, it doesn't really relate to the scaling, but uh, in the, the power device domain, we don't care about the scaling. We, have, we don't have to shrink our device below like one nanometer. But actually, these are still related, highly related to our, our life here. So these are the, for example, this is are the, all of the application in the power electronics. I use the power electronics as an example because I'm mainly working on the power electronics domain here. So you can see that the, the, in the section of the power electronics, it can be divided, for example, the IT consumer. So the IT consumer is the one that the uh, most related to everyone's life here. So we need to have the charger. For example, this is a power supply. This is already like the charger here. And then in, even in the case of automotive, so we need to right now in the age of the hybrid automotive or even like the electrical vehicle here. So we need to have this DC to AC inverter here. So we supply. So if you try to charge your electrical car here, so the electrical car actually is a supply, it's charging to your battery. And then battery is only supplied for the DC voltage. But if you want to drive your wheel, you need to have the AC voltage because AC has a positive negative sinusoidal this waveform. And this waveform can start to drive your wheel. And therefore, we need to have a DC to AC converter here. And that's actually in, super important in the case of the the electrical vehicle here because uh, the, the efficiency of the DC to AC inverter will highly influence our performance of electrical vehicle here. And also there's a section about the industry. So industry power is all about the big power. For example, in the case of wind turbines, in the rail transport, in the power distribution here, these all need to have the, the power electronics here. And that's actually in line with the more and more technology that doesn't really need to consider the scaling. So here is some of the examples that how that the semiconductor material and the new device architecture can benefit our life here. So you might wonder that in the last several years, there's a very popular technology it's called the gallon nitride phase charger or even just phase charger. Also the if you buy the very advanced laptop from the Apple, so they just release a 140 watt 
laptop adapter for the MacBook in the last year here and they claim that this is based on the gallium nitride technology here and here is a sound of the introduction you can see that uh, this is a conventional silicon based device that can carry for 200 volt uh, device rating but if we use a gallium nitride and then you can see the device can be shrink for more than 1 over 10 size and if we can make our device smaller, that means we can make our overall system level as a smaller. And that's why you can see that most of the charger, phase charger, they claim that they have smaller compared to the typical charger. That's one, one of the major benefits here. And therefore, based on this characteristic, it's smaller and faster laptop adapter. And this is one of the demonst early demonstration. This is typical laptop adapter. And then this is, right now we can make the laptop adapter as a smaller, like our cell phone adapter, but the problem also with a higher efficiency here. So that's actually the, the, the ongoing, the, this is a result come from like almost like a 20 years and 10 years study with uh, materials and then device breakthrough so right now in the market you can purchase this one it's called a fast charger and this actually is enabled by the gallium nitride technology here and one more thing i want to mention that the the, the product for the fast charger it has been pumped out in the market i think from the last two years the first company they adapt for the gallium nitride charger is come from the Chinese company, the Xiaomi or the Oppo. They first claim. And later on, more and more uh, company they start to use. Right now, for the Apple, for the Lianxiang, they also stopped trying to uh, adapt this, the, the charger technology here. But it's interesting to see that uh, the first concept the gallium nitride is not new material. It's, uh, if you are uh, using the LED, so LED is already made by gallium nitride for, for more than 10 years. And even the inventor, which is 20 years ago, the professor uh, Nakamura, uh, he is awarded mm -hmm. for the Nobel Prize because of inventing of the gallium nitride LED. So gallium nitride is not a new material. And then the first time to propose using the gallium nitride can make the fast charger is in this conference in the 2014, 2014 here. But the, the first production for this charger, I think it's two years ago, that's maybe like the 2019. So it's a five years later of the first appear of the similar concept in this conference here. So this is just a one example that uh, uh, some of you, if you are, try to look at some of the internet news, say that uh, uh, starting the graduate school, sometimes the useless, uh, the university doing things like us, sometimes useless. But I will say this might be true for the other uh, professional knowledge, the other department, but it's definitely not be true for semiconductor related department here. Because I believe that everyone you're doing here, actually even the paper you are reading, the publication you are reading, actually they are, actually have the quite important value. And then in the future, it really will become a really product that you will use in the daily life. So we already have many, many examples, like the FinFET. FinFET is also first proposed in 1999, as just a purely like the paper discussion. But nowadays, everyone, the cell phone, whoever has a 5 or 3 nanometer technology, they already have a thin fat transistor. And the gallium nitride also is one of the examples. It has been studied, come from the 20 years ago for the first come up with the materials. And later on, we find the application in LED. And right now, it still survives for the another application for the power device or even for the high frequency application. So this just try to prove that uh, whatever you learn here actually have a well, huge impact on the future life because the uh, semiconductor device technology is become the necessary enabler for the all kinds of the technology. Okay, 
So, what we have said before that uh, all about the more law or about the more more technology or about the more the more here actually one of the key driving factor is we trying to make the device that can save for the energy because the energy say once the saving energy can benefit for our earth as well so therefore the power is a key factor to drive it for the next generation of the device and the electronics. So whatever you make, you make the digital chip, actually you try to make that as low power as you can. You might make the analog chip, you make the RF chip, you want to make that as low power as possible as we want. And even you make the, the, the power electronics, we want to save energy, we want to increase the efficiency. So in general, the power is always uh, important in amber in amber for the uh, semiconductor innovations okay so here is uh, some of the the latest status that's uh, what we have been shown before that's already the 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 information that come from textbook so that's already come out for more than 10 years so let's look at some of the the advanced summary from the latest like the IEDA, IEDA, which is the most important the device conference, device circuit conference in the whole world. It's just like the Olympic, kind of like in the area of the semiconductor. So you can see that this is summary come from the 2018. What are the possible options right now, from now on and the future here? Still the same, this already is some keyword we have already mentioned. We have the thin fat. So FinFed is already in production. And also we have the free DP SOI is already in production. But there's also some of the second best CMOS still trying to uh, study and try to overcome the challenges. These are the all we already mentioned. The horizontal gate all wrong. This is a vertical gate all wrong. And this is a negative capacitor fat here. And we also have the non-silicon based CMOS that we also already explained a bit before. Like a Germania channel, like a 35 channel, like a 2D channel, like a CNT, this is a carbon nanotube. And also this is non-typical CMOS, that's where we also mentioned like a tunnel fed or spin fed device here. So you can see that uh, I believe that uh, after this class, for sure, you will not be able to familiar with every device option, but at least at least you already familiar with this term, and you will not feel too much surprised that these all the term will come up again and again. And then this is 2019. This is 2019. That also we can see that in the case of 2019, uh, we still. The major type of the device still more or less the same. This is uh, the the idea talk. Also, this is come from the TSMC. Still, we are mainly consider like a thin fat, and then this is a uh, production level, and this is nano ship. Nano ship is very similar to the nano wine, but just make it as a layer, not as a the the circle. So, and this is under the development and development. And all this like a 2D material and the CNT, this is in the research level. Okay, so the last several slides just want to show that uh, since we are in the semiconductor industry, we are not only familiar with uh, technology, we should have a sense of the marketing kind of things. We have a sense about who actually is a uh, top semiconductor player, sales leader, and who is a top buyer here. So this is the data come from the 2021. And then this is the top semicon 15 uh, semiconductor sales here. So some of them is for sure you already hear before, but uh, the ranking is slightly different in uh in the time scale sometimes will become the why it's become the first sometimes the company is become the second so in the 2000 in the 2021 uh, so the first one is become the samsung 
and then in the last year it was a second and the second one is the Intel so you can see that the Intel start to feel the pressure because the Intel was considered the, the leading giant in the semiconductor industry but now they start to face a problem because their technology start to lag behind and then they, are, they have a not very clear strategy that uh, which part of the business they want to involve. And then the third one is uh, the TSMC. And also we have the fourth one and then the fifth one. The fourth one is uh, also from the, the Korea, it's HK Enix. They are mainly produced for the memory and also we have the Micron. There are also many related to the to the to the memory as well. And also you can see there are still many many companies here. Just some of them that the once in the future want to find a job, you can look at this one to see. Yes. No, I don't think so. There's also there's some of them that uh, it doesn't really mean that uh, the memory is the most important. I think in every aspect are still very important. And I know that uh, each of them are the clients of others. Then how do you uh, distinguish for example the clients of TSMC make some silicon drivers and sell the details? Does that count to the Does not what? Does that count to count for what? I think it come for both. Okay. Yes, it depends on the who sells. Okay. So the these are the, all the 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 things that you might already hear of company like Qualcomm, Nvidia, the Broadcom, MediaTek, and the TI and the AMD. AMD is uh, the uh, super good recently because they start to fast fly back. If you are. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, everyone is familiar with uh, AMD. Uh, AMD has a tough moment before, and then but right now it seems that uh, they come back again. So they become the big rival for the the Intel, and we have the Nvidia, which is uh, very super important for the power electronics because the Nvidia is major located in the Germany, and as you, as you may know, the Germany is very strong in the automotive industry. So Impinia is mainly supplied all of the electron product in terms of the automotive. And also in the case of Apple, Apple right now, they are not only the sales because they sell the chip, they even start to uh, make the chip by themselves. They design their chip. So you can see the, the older version of the MacBook is still use uh, Intel's like a CPU. So they design the CPU and then they use the uh, Intel's architecture and then they even uh, but the, those architecture was made by the TSMC and the rest of but right now the, the Apple actually is making the chip by itself they designed their, the, the chip so the latest MacBook is already they have the M1 this kind of a CPU it's all designed by themselves and then this becomes a problem for the Intel because Intel was uh, previously saying that uh, they can all uh, like the uh, get the uh, Apple's business but right now become Apple also become the rival for the, all of these uh, company again and this is uh, ST ST is uh, the what we call the ST microelectronics is a company located in the Italy and the French and then they are the most famous product for this company is a second car by MOSFET why the silicon carbide MOSFET is famous because Tesla right now is using a silicon carbide MOSFET in their electric vehicle. Once the Tesla announced that they use a silicon carbide device, then the shortage of the the uh, silicon carbide device is increased. So now in the markets, it's so difficult to buy the silicon carbide device. And this is a Kaisha. Kaisha is a company that actually merge between the Toshiba and also I think it's WD in the United States. It's also the memory company and this is NXP and analog device. These all are also the, the company that produce some chips for the analog, analog or application. And why are the companies from China not in the top 
then you have to ask why they can. Have you ever buy the chip from the China company? Never. Yes, that's why. I even don't know how to buy that. Okay. Okay, so these are still the, the, the top 15, and you can see. Uh, then we need to see that who is a top chip customer. So you can see the previous one is the one who tried to sell the chip. But the, this slide is the one actually like buy a lot of the chip here. So you can see that some of them is not surprising because the Samsung, they make it like all kind of the Samsung display, Samsung mobile phone, Samsung laptop. So they also not only produce the chip, they also buy a lot. And also this one, uh, this one are all from the China because they have the huge, the, the, uh, they, they try to buy the chips and then assembly for their product here. But I want to say that the first one right now is uh, the Apple. So this is a 2021 data. You can see that even from last year, still the same. So Apple right now is not only the, the top chip sales, but also they are the top three customer because they try to uh, buy all kinds of the device that put the increase their device performance. Okay, so here is what we have for the first one introduction. So we will take break for 10 minutes. We'll come back for the second part. Okay.它是因为它是这边是48对它是呃因为台湾不是11没有没有台湾是一伏嘛但是意思是说你从电压管来台湾是110伏AC转到48呃一伏的DC对对对它是它是用在server里面对它是server里面这是一般的我们adapter一般我
our schedule. Looking ahead, industry and academia have been working closely to innovate in new transistor structures and new materials, along with new system architecture and 3D integration to sustain the technology advancement beyond 3 nanometer. Let's take a look at some of those innovations. Lithography has traditionally been the main driver for advancements in device density. The recent innovation of EUV lithography broke through the resolution bottleneck of 193 immersion lithography. It delivers higher patterning fidelity, shortened cycle time, and reduced process complexity and defect rates. UV is used in more than 10 mask layers at the 5 nanometer node for line cut, contact, via, and metal line patterning. Single layer EUV patterning replaces multiple layer of 193 immersion patterning, resulting in reduced mass count and lower defect density. It may be fair to say that with the introduction of EUV and its enhancements, lithography resolution will no longer limit device technology as it has in the past. Instead, lithography throughput and other semiconductor challenges may rise to become top issues. On the topic of EUV throughput, it is critical to offset increased power usage of EUV and reduce the total cost of patterning to a level that is comparable or even lower than conjugal patterning. A key indicator of EUV throughput is source power. There has been steady progress in EUV source power, now reaching 350 watts. This enables 5 nanometer high volume production, paves the way for 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer development, and provides a path to reducing lithography cost over time. We are also seeing some major breakthroughs in new transistor structure and new materials. Unlike earlier generations, when dinar scaling provides the principal guideline for device performance advancement, logic technologies today utilize a variety of materials in device innovations, co-optimized with circuit designs. Shown here is the first 5 nanometer fin fat featuring high mobility channel in volume production. This innovation was built on many years of advanced research. Going forward, beyond the fin fat, nano sheet transistor may offer additional performance and power efficiency. On the left is a TEM picture of a nano sheet transistor with tight space between sheets to reduce parasitic capacitance. This nano sheet transistor achieves smaller drain induced barrier lowering and subthreshold swing to boost circuit performance as compared to previous technology generations. Transistor performance improvement translates directly into lower VDD operation of s -ray. The Shimu Plus shows fully functional S-RAM at 0.46 volt. In the past few technology generations, design technology co-optimization, or DTCO, combines with intrinsic scaling was adopted to achieve the desired logic density and die cost reduction. I wish to point out that because of DTCO, intrinsic scaling metrics such as contacted gate pitch and minimum metal pitch no longer reflect the actual logic density of a technology. DTCO is enabled by new process technology features such as gate contact over active area, single diffusion breaks, fin depopulation, and various self-aligned features. The result is a robust 1.8 times 
increase in logic density. And a healthy 35 to 40 percent per generation chip size reduction for the same design. Even in the less scalable areas of the chip, such as analog and I.O., are included. The contribution of DTCO is expected to continue to grow in the future nodes. TSMC is also looking to new areas to continue innovating. We are seeing promising research in many areas of technology. For example, low-dimensional materials, such as 2D-layered materials, have presented plenty of opportunities, both in the front end and in the back end of the line. While low-dimensional materials are new to the semiconductor industry, significant breakthroughs have already been achieved in recent years. For example, we have successfully grown high-quality single crystal hexagonal boron nitrile on wafer scale. This work was published in Nature magazine, March 2020. These low-dimensional channel and interfacial materials can be transferred onto arbitrary substrates at low fabrication temperatures, which opens up the avenue for fabricating active logic and memory layers in a 3D manner. Another low-dimensional material, the 1D carbon nanotube, is also a promising candidate for future transistors. A key issue that needs to be resolved for the carbon nanotube channel is a thin-gate dielectric that enables short-gate length transistors. A paper presented at the IEDM two months ago demonstrated a breakthrough in high-K gate stack on carbon nanotube channels with equivalent oxide thickness suitable for a 10 nanometer gate length transistor. Many more novel materials will be introduced into transistor manufacturing following the long established trend that started from the use of copper, silicon germanium, hafnium oxide, and various materials as gate electrode. The use of new material is not limited to front end of the line devices. We have already seen encouraging results in the use of copper and ruthenium in the back end of the line. We have looked at some examples on how to advance the transistor technology at chip level. Advancing transistor technology not only provides performance and energy efficiency gains, but it also provides the necessary headroom to add features and to innovate in architecture and applications software. It is worth noting that without device density improvements, there will be insufficient on-chip cache, no energy efficient multi-core chips, and since they require more transistor to implement, and no accelerators for the same reason. Domain-specific architectures for GPUs and application processors require additional transistors to perform the specialized functions. Today, the most advanced GPU products have more than 50 billion transistors at chip level and have phenomenal performance and energy efficiency. At the system level, Multiple solutions such as TSMC's Info, COWAS, SOIC technologies have opened up ways to grow transistor count for the packaged system to over 300 billion. I don't intend to go into the details of how each of these TSMC 3D fabrics technologies work. What I would like to point out is that our industry has already begun to look at beyond just engineering individual chips and have moved to integrate individual chips into systems. Those chips are also called chiplets. Recently, chiplets 
have become a very hot topic, but some of the industry's pioneer system integration technologies were doing chiplet integration before chiplet were cool. Take, for example, the COWAS technology. It has been in volume production since 2011, produced more than 90 products with logic dies integrated with memory dies, as well as logic dies integrated with logic dies to boost performance of the packaged system. System on a chip, also known as SOC, is no longer Relaxing part is finished for the introduction one. Introduction is uh, generally like the overview of everything, so we don't talk too much detail. And then we start to move move on to certain things that uh, everyone needs uh, a little bit passion about the uh, understanding, and even later on that uh, some of the we will start to have more equation and physics based knowledge trying to understand uh, the, the semiconductor device. So the first one is uh, we will start to introduce the materials and then the crystal structure for the solids. Okay, so before we talk about the materials, we need to understand that how do we actually form the semiconductor device. So uh, the semiconductor device architectures that's actually contain the several different basic parts and then we put the the different part together and then it will become the uh, a, a device so therefore we need to understand like the basic part first the first one the essential for the semiconductor device is for sure the first one is materials so first one we need to have a semiconductor materials here and for example, in the case that the probably you already know that the, we have the, if we try to dope something, we can have the device materials that actually, which is showing like the P-type semiconductor material or the N-type material. And the major difference is that the, the N-type material is a material full of electrons here and the p-type is a material full of the hole here here so that's a semiconductor material and then next level is about the junction so once if we put the, these two semiconductor material together They will be the junction formation. So if we put the P-type and then the N-type semiconductor to together, the interface between P and N is what we usually call this as a junction. Jian And then in the interface or in this junction, actually they will be the many many physics uh, phenomena will happen so first we understand material and second we need to understand what actually happened inside of this junction because the junction will come out with a certain non-equilibrium uh, case will be happen non-equilibrium physics phenomena will happen in this junction and then last one is a device so once we understand the junction, then actually the overall this is already a device. So this is already the device. And this device is usually we call this as a dial a GT. So therefore in order to understand the device, first we need to understand materials and later we need to understand the junction and then if, 
and the device actually you will be the the certain correlation with the junctions and this is a case for the diode but uh, if we are looking for the MOSFET In the case of MOSFET, as we have shown, this is P-type substrate here. And we have M plus in the source, M plus in the trap. We have a dielectric. And this is our dielectric here. In the typical MOSFET, we also need to deal with the junction because there are many, many PN junctions here. In this case, you can see that there's a, this one PN plus. So this is also one PN junction. This is also mm -hmm. one PN junction. Mm -hmm. This is also another one PN junction. So you can see that uh, how important the PN junction is, is that because of the, not only in the typical dial in the MOSFET, we also need to face the issue related to the interface between the P-type and N-type. Okay, then we back to the basic, what's a semiconductor material? So the first one I want to introduce is the elemental semiconductor. Elemental semiconductor. And then it's mainly found in the group four of the periodic tables. So inside the periodic table, this group four is mainly considered as the elemental semiconductor. We can uh, form the semiconductor material which is composed of a single species of the autumn. So we can have semiconductor material with only the carbon, with only the silicon, with only the germanium. And then most often is silicon and germanium. And also, if we look at the periodic tables here, we can find that there's not only the group 4, but also the group 3 and then group 5 here. So in the case of the, we make the semiconductor combined with group 3 and group 5 here. This is how we call this as a compound semiconductor. So the compound semiconductor is basically the combination with the two different species of the materials here. And for example, you can see there's a some example, like the gallium arsenide, like the indium phosphide. These are the all very popular use right now that the, for the different application. The gallium arsenide can be used for the high frequency, can be used for the uh, wireless, like the the, uh, high frequency operate uh, communication and then the indium phosphorus could be used even for even higher frequency because due to the small band gap here so these are generally what we call this as a compound semiconductor okay so the one that we already mentioned another type is combination with the two different materials here that's how we call this as a compound semiconductors. So the compound semiconductor is a form from the spatial combination of group 3 and group 5 elements. So we put the group 3 and group 5 together, we can form another one called the compound semiconductor. And then that can be considered like the two element or three element here. Two element is sometimes we also call the binary here. For example, this one, 
the gallium arsenide. So this is uh, GaAs. So there's only two elements. Or the gallium phosphide. This is GaP. So these are the two elements. But if we consider three elements here, we can have, for example, this one, aluminum gallium arsenide here. So these are the three elements. Yes? Do we need to know the number of this compound? Full name, what does it mean, the full name? Example, English name. AIP, do we need to memorize by reading them? No, you don't need it. Uh, it, you don't need to remember the name. The, the, the focus of this class is not the name, it's the physics behind. So we don't need to know the physics behind. Yes, you can know the, only the abbreviations and now. So the three elements, for example, aluminum, gallium, arsenide, or aluminum, so these are the three elements compound device and the one showing here are the two elements so these are the two elements semiconductor so if we try to make the two elements or three elements definitely we will change the material property so this actually give us a certain design strategy because we can tune in the percentage of the different combination of this compound and then trying to get the uh, material properties that we want to have here okay so the first one uh, so this is a uh, elemental semiconductor so let's just uh, go through the most important two elemental semiconductor. So the first one is the germanium. So germanium is the first material that's used for the integrated circuit, and then, but however, it's a trace material, and the most important characteristic is a small band gap. And also, it's a poor thermal stability. And also, the germanium oxide is soluble in the water. So, as you know, that if we want to make the and more as most fat, the oxide is most critical part. So we need to have the perfect insulator that we want to use for the oxide here. Although the germanium is the first used for the semiconductor IC, but the problem is that the germanium oxide is not very stable. It's a soluble in the water, which means that if you put the device in the certain humidity environment just like today it's very humid now and then the germanium oxide will be influenced by the lowest water and then vapor here and then that's in the end become the very poor dielectric here and that's why the, the later on the germanium not become the main fashion in the semiconductor uh, industry here and later on another one is called the silicon so silica is a one of the most common elements in the world. So the, you know that the, the, the sand, sa, is actually is a, is a also the composed by the silica material. So that's also the very common element. That's why silica is a very uh the ma the the materials are the easy to get it and then the band gap is larger than germanium and we will talk about what is band gap later is a very important characteristic so the silicon band gap
it's a 1.1 electron volt. So that's an important number that uh, you should be aware of this one because later on when we consider the wide band gate device, we can when we consider small band gate device, we all use the uh, 1.1 electron as a reference. So the device, the material which is larger than 1.1 electron volt, that's we consider the wide band gate. And the material below the 1.1 electron volt, that's we consider as a small band gate here. And then the most important part for the silicon is uh, we can form the what we call the silicon dioxide as an insulator. It's very stable. So silicon dioxide is very stable and that's why that the most phase based on silicon technology become the main technology from the last uh, six 60 years because of the advantage of the using the silicon dioxide as an insulator. And also this is an indirect banking material. So the indirect banking material is one, just saying that it's not a, has a, the, the lighting efficiency. So if you consider like the LED, usually we need to have the direct banking material. But the indirect banking material has very poor like an emission, photon emission efficiency. So we will also talk about this later. So you can see this is a TSMC, the 16 nanometer thin fat, and this is based on the silicon. And then the, the, the substrate is a silicon, and then we still use a silicon dioxide. Of course, the dielectric is not a purely simple, come only of the silicon dioxide, we have the other, uh, material that will be used together. Okay, so from the planet to FinFET, I think right now that everyone has already a little bit sense about that the, the planet MOSFET is just a purely very basic type of transistor. For the very advanced technology, you already consider to use uh, this kind of three-dimensional device. That's how we call the FinFET. So the first one is MOSFET. So the MOSFET is generally as a planar device. So because of the carrier transport is just in the very service, and then it's a planar, and then with source strength are put together. That's how we call this as a planar device. And also the later up we have the fully deplete SOI. So this is a SOI. Silicon on insulator so this is SOI here and also the most advanced one is thin fat so as I say that uh, uh, when you first time to hear this term you might not be very familiar but now on I believe we, we already mentioned the most fat is more than the 10 times so I believe everyone has already get a little bit sense that the, what the typical MOSFET look like. And also we already start to mention a little bit about the thin fat. Although the really like the physics inside thin fat is still vague for everyone, but at least you know that the, the thin fat is actually the, just uh, another type of MOSFET, but we try to make as a three dimensional type. So this is technology trend that we try to make the device from planner to the film fat. Okay, so consider the compound semiconductors here. That's uh, also there's uh, several important materials that want to be introduced. The first one is uh, gallium arsenide. So gallium arsenide is a uh, direct band gate material. And the most important part is that the gallium arsenide has very high electron mobility. So you can see that right now in the most of the cell phone, in the, in the low power, you actually already start to use the gallium arsenide as a 
a, a, a high frequency application. And you can see that uh, also the, the, the Gate Us 9 was a technology developed in the really, really early time. In the 1993, there's already the, the paper that's already discussed that uh, why we need to have a getting arsenal uh, for the very high performance electronic circuit. And the reason I want to mention this paper because there's this one name that uh, everyone should be aware of. This is a paper published by the Rockwell Institute, which is a institute in the United States working on the high frequency communication and advanced electronics. And the second author of this one, Frank Mao Zhong Zhang. This is our ex-president for the NCTU, Zhang Mao Zhong Xiaozhang. That uh, his major uh, achievement in terms of semiconductor is that uh, he was really early involved in the development of the gallium arsenide based semiconductor. And that's also Another example that uh, it was developed in 1993, but so on, so far, it's still the major, like the main technology option for the high frequency uh, device in our cell phone. Uh, the, actually, we still use uh, gallium arsenide very often here. Okay, so this is uh, gallium arsenide. And another one that's very popular, which is related to the, the gallium nitride. So the gallium nitride is a material which is a direct band gap. And then the major feature for the direct band gap is that we can use this property for the very good LED application. So we will talk about the, the LED, not completely like the understanding of LED, just a little bit tap about the direct band gap. Uh, uh, the concept of band gap later. And also, the gallium nitride also feature with uh, high electron mobility. And therefore, usually we call this as a hand. We also uh, talk about later on, very late, almost in the end of the semester we will quickly go through what the typical the hand device look like and the major difference between the gallium nitride and gallium arsenide is uh, the large band gap so it has a band gap 3.4 electron volt large band. So that's why that uh, uh, as I say that uh, we use a silicon band as a main reference. So the device the material which is larger than the 1.1 we consider as a large band gap. In here we have 3.5 electrons. And in general, like the uh, also another very famous compound that uh, is nowadays that the uh, also, you can hear from news is about the silicon carbide material. So silicon carbide material also feature with a large band gap and also very good thermal conductivity. So thermal conductivity is related to the thermal dissipation, sanze. So which means if you have a good thermal conductivity, you have a better thermal dissipation, the sanze能力就会变得很好. So in general, if we consider the large band gap and then the good thermal conductivity, actually this implies that this kind of, if we have a large band gap, and high thermal conductivity. This actually implies that this semiconductor material is very suitable for the high temperature 
application. And then, now you need to understand uh, the, what kind of device need to use for the high temperature apparel environment and what's the typical operation environment. For the case of the consumer electronics, so for example, the cell phone, the laptop, the charger, the display that all we use is related to the consumer electronics, just uh, like the, the human uh, live environment. The requirement for the consumer electronics is always we only test the device up to the 125 Celsius degree. So if we test the electronics for the consumer electronics, we will test it up to 125 Celsius degree. 一般的的 user environment only only use up to one hundred twenty five Celsius degree, but however, consider different application level, the testing requirement is different. For example, if we want to use the electronic for the automotive application, so for the automotive electronics. It is required that all the devices are need to test up to the 200 Celsius degree. So that, I think that makes sense, right? If you are driving the car, the car in the high speed, in the highway, under the, in the noon, actually the, all the component inside is experienced, it's really high temperature. So we need to make sure that the device for the automotive application, it should be very stable up to 200 Celsius degree. So that's critical standard that if you want to sell your chip to the automotive manufacturer, uh, they all request you need to prove that your device is uh, reliable up to 200 Celsius degree. So actually it's a very tough requirement because of the 200, actually the every a uh, failure mechanism will be uh, seen, will be accelerated. But however, this is all the electronics on the earth. How about if we make electronics that suitable for the envi environment out of earth for the space application? So if you, you need to have the electronic for the space, electronics application, Actually, you need to make sure that the, the device is very stable in the environment, which is larger than 300 Celsius degree. Right? That if you want to, right now we have many like the, the space explorer, this, uh, 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 is a space explorer. So you were landing all the explorer in the different kind of the environment. Like for example, in the in the moon, in the moon is the one who is close to us. Maybe in the future you we already have in the Mars or even in the Venus. Venus. So if you call that the, I think the NASA just released uh, the the foot the image the the certain videos that uh, whether uh, they took like more than one or two years to start to see that uh, how that uh, the the different space look like the landscape or low space actually it's quite cool maybe next time we can see that but in any way that all these uh, electronics that are based on the space application need to be operate beyond the 300 Celsius degrees here so for example like in the case, for example, the NASA, they actually make the second carbide device for beyond like a 500 Celsius degree. So that's actually for the space uh, applications. So these are the very uh, 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 tough condition for the, all of the electronics under the different application level. 
Okay, so the concept, now we introduce a concept related to the band gap here. So the band gap is also very important because later on, we will use a band gap, band diagram here to analyze our device. So the band diagram is a necessary tool for us to analyze under the different gate bytes because we use that to understand the electron and then the whole transport inside our semiconductor material here. So as I say, the silicon is a band gap with a 1.1 electron volt. 1.1 electron volt here. And then that's a typical standard here. And then if we have the band gap material that's smaller than silicon, you should consider the small band gap material like the germanium here. And then we actually consider this part is how we call the conduction band. And then in the bottom, we call this as a valence band. Conduction band and valence band. And then the concept of the electron or current transport inside the material is related to if you have the valence band, that means you have a four electrons here. You have four electrons in the valence band and during the certain excitation, no matter for the light or voltage bias or temperature, however, once you have electron across your band gap to your conduction band, and this is become the current here. Of course, we will explain this later for sure. That here just a, a brief introduce that uh, how we can the band, the band diagram of band gap is just a, a, t a drawing that with a number of the conduction band and valence band and band gap. But uh, this actually is just another kind of schematic trying to understand how the carrier flow inside our material here. So we have the place full of the electrons here. Under the bias, your electrons start to overcome the band gap, reach to the conduction band. And this becomes a current here. So if you first time to understand this, uh, hear about this, you can try to think about the later on there's a numerical uh, lots of the equation will try to understand the concept of band gap here. And also, as I say, we have the second carbide, we have the gallium nitride, and these are the all the wide band gap material with uh, more than three electron volt and then three trombone. Even we have an extreme uh, large band gate device that's based on the diamond. So we have the uh, six, more than six electron volts here. So based on the concept of here, so you can see that the electron here is trying to jump through the band gate to reach to the conduction band. It becomes a current here. And therefore, if we make this as a larger, that means the leak current is lower, right? So you have a wide band gap material. And that actually means that you have a lower leakage current. Because of the electron here, it's very difficult to jump all through this wide band gate to reach the conduction band. So the same concept here, because this is a small band gate, so electron is easily jump and jump to the conduction band and become the current here. But if we consider the wide band gate material here, the electron here is very difficult to reach to this one. Like in the case here, electron in here is become too difficult to reach to the side here, and that's why the leak current for the wide band gate device is generally very low here. So this is some implication based on the band gap. So that the, the, the introduced for the band gap concept or band diagram is not the actually confused everyone. It's trying to help us to understand 
the electron and current transport. The most important is to understand the physics behind. So don't be confused by this new concept. The, the, the overall idea is trying to help us understand how actually the current or the carrier transport inside of our semiconductor device here. Okay, so this is an energy band gap. Okay, so let's finish the first part of the materials here. And the second one is trying to understand the junction. So once we understand the junction, we can start to move to the device here. But consider the junction, there are four different kinds of junction need to be understood. Uh, as the previous already mentioned, the basic of semiconductor device is the formation of the junction. So we need to consider the all kinds of different of the junction. The first one is metal and semiconductor. So if you have a semiconductor material and then put a metal on top, you will form the junction here. So that's for sure. We need to understand what happened at this interface. And second one is already mentioned that if we put a two different material here, two different doping material, we have the n-type doping, we have a p-type doping. If we put together, what happened to this interface? And also, we can consider the two different material. For example, one can be this is silicon, and one this is can be the gallium nitride or compound semiconductor. So if we put the two different material together, what happened to this interface? And also, the last one is related to our MOSFET is that we put a semiconductor, we put an insulator, we put a conductor. If we put everything together, actually this is already the MOSFET. And what happened to those interface? So we are curious the interface between here, because this interface between here will govern the major physics of this kind of a uh, transistor here. So this is already the key part of the MOS transistor. So we have the source thread and we have the metal and this is outside. So if you put the cross section here so this is already the M, O, this is S. Okay, so the key part of the MOSFET actually is the MOS gate region here. So if you understand the gate region, we almost control like 90% of the operation principle for the, the MOS type of a device. Okay. So let's look at the first one, the junction, in the case of the between the metal and semiconductor here. So the in the this is how we typically call the the MS junction. So the metal semiconductor junction, and there are the three different type of the MS junction. The first one is a shocky contact. And second one, this is Omi contact. And the third one is a metal semiconductor transistor. That's typically you call this as a mass fat. And first one, you need to understand what this means for the Shaki and then the Omi contact here. So Omi contact is relative easily be understood because we have the Omi law. So if you are from the double E background or if you have ever uh, follow the class related to the electronics, electronic circuit, we always what we have what we call the Omi law. So the Omi law is actually means that you have the IV curve. You have a current versus voltage here. And the current and voltage will 
starting from the zero volt, you already have from this kind of the very linear characteristic. That's how we call this as an ohmic. So if we can make the contact between the metal and semiconductor exhibit this kind of a characteristic that the, the curve will cross over of the zero, that's usually we consider this is the only contact here. On the other hand, what does mean the Sharkey contact? The Sharkey contact has a characteristic Still the same, we are interested in the current versus the voltage. The Sharkey contact has a characteristic that actually in the beginning, there's no, even you apply the voltage, there's still no current flow. After a certain moment, when your voltage is larger enough, then you still see this kind of the current increase here. And therefore, your curve here actually not pass through the zero point here and there is a certain of the voltage drop in this area and in this case we call this as a Sharkey contact we will explain the Sharkey contact and ohmic contact that the later also why that the certain contact actually exhibit the perfect ohmic law but certain will not we will also explain these things here. And how this actually related to our device here. So if you look at again for our MOSFET. Again, so this is source and drain here. We have this is one. This is N plus, this is N plus, this is a P type of substrate here. So right now I believe everyone is very familiar. We have the dielectric, we have the gate. In previously, we don't put too much attention on the source drain side. We only explain that we have a gate, an insulator, and we have a substrate. But actually, in the source drain, we also need to have the electrodes. Here, we need to put a certain metal. So this is generally we call this as an electro. And electro is a place where we can apply voltage. So you can apply the source voltage, you can apply the drain voltage here. Now we can see that the layers of metal semiconductor interface is happen here. We have a metal semiconductor interface. We have a metal semiconductor interface here. So, although previously we have already mentioned that we apply the gate bias, you form the electron here, and once you have a drain and the electron flow, but actually the current not only flow into the drain side, but also need to go over this metal fly flow out become the drain current. Therefore, there is a possibility that the current here first will experience this MS interface and later on become our drain current here. And therefore, actually, the metal and semiconductor interface is not ideal because we put the two different material together. There's always the resistance here. There's always a resistance here and actually we we'll call this as a contact resistance RC here so ideally if we want to make the good source drive or good MOSFET we should make our RC as a smaller as a possible so once you make an ohmic contact, your contact resistance is smaller, then your most of the current can be fl flow out, reach to the drain side here. So that's the idea behind. So that's why that uh, we care so much about ohmic contact or Sharkey contact because you can see this one will both can be happen in this interface 
if you do the very bad job here, and then your content resistance will be extremely high. And in that case, you will have the very low drain current output. Okay, another one is we say that we can also consider the the semiconductor with the same material but with a different doping. That's how we generally consider this is a the PN junction. So there are several different type of a PN junction. The first one is the PN dial, and second one is a bipolar junction transistor. We will explain later. Bipolar junction transistor, and then this, that's how we call this as BJT, and the third one is a junction fat, J fat, and the fourth one is sometimes we call this as a thyristor. The side register is a combination with a PN PN structure here. So, as a PN dial, I think everyone is already familiar. So just uh, schematically draw that how that the BJT look like. So the BJT is a device. Whether we have the PNP or we have the NPN. So in this case, we all have the PN junction here. So when we talk about BJT, we will spend quite a lot of time in discussing this PN junction. And also another one is the JFET. So the JFET is a very similar to our MOSFET but uh, it's different operation principle still the same but right now we have the N substrate and we still put uh, the N plus as a source and drain here and but right now we have the P region under the gate and we don't have the gate dielectric here we apply the vg here so you can see this is p and n is formation of another pn junction so we can try to control this pn junction to make the j phase turn on or turn off here so that's the idea behind the j phase here and last one is a cyrister Cyrister is a transistor that we use very often, but uh, that probably you ignore every day. The cyrister is look like the structure here. It's mainly used for the high power and high current handling. And then this is structure for the cyrister. That's a PNPM, and that's use a very high power and high current. application and where do we need the thyristor it's inside the the, the electrical station if you look at for the electrical station you found that the, there's a, what we call the thyristor valve that's each one is a thyristor it's mainly taking care of our electricity so this is a cyrister is also based on the PNPN structure here. So now you see that uh, as long as we understand the PN junction is so useful for us because the rest of the device concept is just mainly also based on the PN junction. Okay, the next one. The Two, the, we put the two different semiconductors together. That's also formation of the junction here. And in this case, we call the heat draw junction because we put the two different. Heat draw in the Mandarin called the Yi Zi. 
So it's a kind of what we call the yi zhi jie mian, heat draw junction. So the basic heat draw junction device, for example, the LED is also the heat draw junction device, or the laser dial. The third one is HBT. It's a heat draw junction bipolar transistor. Or the last one, which is a hand, is a high electron mobility transistor. And let's look at some example. Like here, this one is a LED and laser dye, HPD and hand. They all have a different. A uh, different device architecture. In here, I just put an example and how the hand look like. So the hand structure is look like that. We put a two different material. One in the button we put as a gallium nitride. On top we put the aluminum gallium nitride here, and this is typical of what we call the gallium nitride hand. And because of the certain magic will happen because of some materiality property and then certain mismatch between the these two uh semiconductor material, there's uh, already the electron will be formation between the aluminum gallium nitride and the gallium nitride, and this is very high electron density, and usually we call this as a two dimensional. Electron gas, sometimes just call as a two D E G. Yeah. So the gang hand right now is very promising for the R F, and then the power application. That's for your information. That the how that the two different semiconductor material that can create a certain new physics. Here and therefore that's why the the junction. If we want to understand the gallium nitride hand, also it's crucial to understand the interface between the aluminum gallium nitride and gallium nitride. Okay, the last one that whether we already talked is about the metal oxide semiconductor. So in here the the metal metal oxide junction. There's a Two different kind of the the metal oxide junction we need to understand. The first one is the MOS capacitors, and the second one is a MOSFET. As we already mentioned, that the MOSFET actually is just a structure combined with the MOS cap. Also, the PN junction. So, if you really want to fully understand the MOSFET, then first one try to understand the MOS cap, and then also understand the PN junction. So this is a typical MOS cap that's already look like the capacitor is a structure combined with the metal oxide and semiconductor. So that's what we also call this as a MOS capacitor. Okay, and later, uh, we need to also introduce some fundamental series that needed for the semiconductor device here. That uh, we will use these fundamental series all over again, again here. The first one is uh, most of the nightmare for the for the students. Also, when I was young, when I was first to learn this, I also feel very confused. Even right now, most of student. They still really don't understand that the, what the quantum mechanics here. So the first one is a quantum mechanic. Quantum mechanics.
So quantum mechanics actually it just trying to describe that uh, when we put our the carrier when we consider the micro scale the scenes in the micro scale what happened between the old this carrier here. 所以量子力学基本上的意思就是我们就把说我们考虑一个事情发生在极小极小的尺寸里面的时候就会发现说所有的carrier跟lattice它会跟传统的牛顿力学会有一些不同的一些physics所以 uh, uh, that's the purpose for the quantum mechanics The quantum mechanics is, uh, to be honest, is very, very tough uh, series that uh, you can watch the there's a whole book that talk about quantum mechanics. But luckily, in our case, we don't really need that deep quantum mechanics. We only need like the very shallow part is already enough for us to understand the electron transport. So the purpose for this class of the quantum mechanics, we are not going to tell everything about the quantum mechanics. We, only, we will only introduce the part that is highly relevant for the semiconductor. The part that is highly relevant for the carrier transport. So you don't have to worry that you will be beat by the quantum mechanics because we won't talk so much. We only take the several parts that help us to understand the uh, electrons and the carrier transport. And then consider the quantum mechanics for sure. We will consider the Schrodinger's wave equation and then the band diagram theory here. And Based on this, we will start to look at for the carrier transport. So the carrier transport, the carrier here is just a general name of the electron and holes. So we both consider electron and hole. That's how we call this as a carrier here. So we need to derive the Bipolar transport equation. Bipolar means that we consider electron and hole. So that's a equation can be both to use to describe the electrons and hole behaviors here. And that's consider diffusion, drift, generation, and recombination. That's all we need to understand by using the, uh, the carrier transport knowledge. And then the third one, which will be the Poisson equation. So the Poisson equation is an equation that allows us to derive the electric and potential distribution based on the charge distribution. Yeah, so that's also very important. If one, if your future research work is related to the simulation, related to the TK, you will be very familiar with the Poisson equation because all the software trying to calculate the charge, trying to calculate the electrical and then the voltage potential basically just the iteration of the Poisson equation. They calculate the value, put the Poisson equation, and to see that whether it can converge. If it can converge, then stop. If it's diverged, then put another value. So it's a many, many iteration in the end, try to find out what's the best simulation result here. So these are the fundamental series that we will also talk about. Okay, so then let's look at uh, what kind of the solids that uh, we will be interested in our semiconductor. So in general, there are the three types of the solids. The first one is amorphous, and second one is a polycrystal, and the third one is a single crystal here. So the amorphous is have the order only with a few atoms or molecular dimension. So amorphous usually is a uh, the, the material that we don't want because it's only the few older, very limited of the older of this uh, the latest arrangement. And polycrystal has a high degree of over older over many atomic and the molecular dimension so as to show in here. And then the single crystal of course is a one with a high degree of older and also the regular geometry periodicity here. 
So usually, the single crystal structure has a better superior electrical uh, properties compared to the non-single crystal material because of the gram boundary. The gram boundary can degrade the electrical characteristic. So therefore, where is the gram boundary? This is the gram boundary. These are the gram boundary. So the gram boundary can degrade our electrical performance here. So usually we want to make the gram boundary as uh, smaller as uh, possible. Then we need to first to understand how we define the cell, how we define the lattice structures inside of the solid here. So we have a first one, what we call this as a unicell. So this is just a pure definition. Unicell, a small value of a crystal that can be used to reproduce the entire crystal. And we also have another definition called the primitive cell. It's a small cell that can be replete to form the lattice here. So in many cases, we prefer to use a unicell. That's more convenient that, uh, the, to try to characterize a cell here. So we can consider this vector, which is a combination with uh, A, B, C, these three vectors here. So if you uh, have the crystal structure, we can use this one. This is A, uh, no, this is B, this is C, and this is A. So we can, in a certain space, definitely we can use a one vector, try to describe the everything in this space here. And therefore, if you have the lattice, look like here. So if you want to have the certain of the indication of this lattice, you can use a combination of the, these three vector. In the end, you can have, I think that uh, should not be uh, quite surprised for everyone. This is a very basic engineering mathematics already tells us that we can use a vector to represent the space and location inside of a certain space. Okay, so in this case, we found out that if we consider the basic type, there's a three different basic type of the, cre the lattice here. The first one is a simple cubic. And then the, the simple cubic is uh, one that uh, you will have the all turns in the each corner. But you have the all turn in the A corner, but each one is only have one over A. So that's in the end. The number of all turn per unit cell in the simple cubic is one. And the second one is a body central cubic. So that's usually we call this as a BCC here. In this case, we have eight in the corner plus one in the center. So you have the two alternates here and the last one is face central 
cubic. Okay, center cubic. So then in this case, we have what we generally call the FCC here. So in this case, we still have the A. In the corner, but we have the six in the face, and then each face has the one and have the half, so that in the end you have the four, four alternate per unit cell. Okay, so let me explain again. So in the simple cubic, we have the eight in the corner, but the only one of the corner only occupy for the one of the eight. So in the end, you only have the one number of alternate. But in the body center cubic here, so you have still eight in the corner, but you have one in the center here. So that will be increased, this one. So therefore you have two. And then in the face center here, you still have eight in the corner, but then you have the six face here. And each face, that each one in the face only have half here. So in the end, you have a full number of alternates in the per unit cell here. It's four. Okay, so we will stop here today. So if you have any question, just feel free to let me know or pass by to discuss with me. And next week, we won't have the class because next week is a national holiday for the February 28th. So enjoy the holiday and see you two weeks later. Okay.